Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for another Friday Bible study at noon. We will conclude what we left off on last week about fighting the good fight of faith. So we're in a faith fight, and the weapon that we use is faith. We are in a faith fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. So we are involved in a faith fight. A lot of people, a lot of Christians haven't got the message yet that we're in a faith fight. And also, the fight we are engaged in is a faith fight. It's not one of weapons, not a gun. Put your gun down, your knife, your verbal, the abusive words. Put all that down because that is not how you fight this fight because we're dealing with spirits. And God said, fight the good fight of faith. And the weapon we use is the word of God. Word is synonymous with faith. You get faith, you get the word. You get the word, you get faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what we are doing is enforcing our victory. We're not trying to get a victory. We have the victory in Jesus' name. So we're standing on God's word. We already have it, but we're just maintaining our victory. And in order to maintain your victory, to maintain your anything, you're going to have to put up a fight. And that you need to know what type of weaponry you use in this uh, uh, fight because we're fighting spirits. It, it's, it's spirits is coming after us. Amen. And they're trying to get our victory from us. They're trying to convince us that somehow we don't have the victory by looking at the circumstances. But we know from God's word that we do have the victory. And uh, you and I, apart from faith, are totally defenses. The only thing that, that separates us from, like I said last week, from victory and defeat. Uh, from healing and, 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 and sickness, uh, from prosperity and lack is the word of God. The word of God is the only thing, it's our faith in God's word. It's the only thing that's keeping us from defeat, that's keeping us from sickness, that's keeping us from anything that the enemy coming against us is our faith in God's word. Because so we're, like I said, we're in a world that's dominated by Satan. He is the God of this world system, not us. That's why the Bible says we're in the world, but not of this world system. And so he does not have the legal right to lord it over us and tell us what to do in Jesus' name. And we're going to see that. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. It says, let's go to 1 Peter 5 and 9 in the King James Version. So if you have your Bible, let's go to 1 Peter 5 and 9 in the Bible. And let's see what does the Word of God say about this enemy that we're resisting. Amen. 1 Peter 5 and 9 says, whom, and we know whom is a pronoun that takes the place of a noun. Say whom right now is telling us is there something that we're resisting. It is a person. Satan is a person. He's a spiritual being. Whom? Whom resists? So God said we need to resist this person. He is the object of discussion. It's whom resists this person. So we're going to resist him. How? steadfast in the faith so if you're not steadfast in the faith it's telling me that you will not be able to resist him if you're not steadfast in the word of God if you're not steadfast speaking the word of God like you're speaking on yesterday and then today you're not and then you're going to speak it again the next day but then the next day you're not uh, speak it only when you get in a situation when, when you, everything is okay you want to speak the word but then when trials and tribulation come you don't want to speak the word of God then it's, you can't resist in that way that's how he getting in he say resist steadfast in the faith so he say if I'm steadfast in the faith this is the only way I'm going to be able to resist this enemy that's coming up against me he say knowing see you're only going to be able to resist knowing that the same affliction, not a different, not different affliction, the same afflictions are accomplished in your brother that are in the world. So nothing is unique upon the sun. It's people everywhere standing and fighting, standing on the word of God. We're all having, if you resist it, everybody is resisting this devil because we're in the world but we're not of this world system. So everybody is having to resist and we're going to have to resist this enemy that's trying to take our victory and, and, and uh, until Jesus comes. But that's okay. We got the Jesus to leave us to finish.
this is he gave us the weaponry of things that we need to use to resist him. He said the same afflictions, whatever trial, whatever hardship, whatever pain that you're going to, we can resist it. That's the good news. We don't have to roll over and let him take advantage of us. He said resist him in the faith. That's why faith is so and again, they say, are uh, accomplished in your brother. So th th it's been accomplished everywhere in the world. All over the world, God got people be standing up against the devil and resisting him. Amen? So that's what we got to do. So faith is a resistor. If you do not have faith, you cannot resist the devil. It's just going to be an impossibility. But if you do not resist the devil in faith, Guess what? He's going to run over you and backtrack. That's the type of spirit he is. He is a relentless devil. That, that's okay. We are. We can be relentless in faith. But he will run over you and backtrack. It's just he, he wants you dead. He wants you gone. So he, he's relentless. And so let's go to James 4 and 7, Amplified, and tell us what we have to do. James 4 and 7, Amplified Bible. Thank God, I thank God for his word because before I got his word, man, I was defeated. I didn't know what to do. I thought because I was saved that the devil was going to automatically leave me alone. I didn't know that after I got saved that I had to do something, but I found out later on in life that yes, you're saved and the fight just begun all over again. So James 4 and 7 says from the Amplified, it says, so be subject to God. Be subject to God. To be subject to God is to be submitted to the word of God. Be obedient to the word of God. Do what the word of God says. And then when you be obedient to God and you're doing everything that he say do, now he say resist the devil. And, and you resist him by you standing firm against him. So you can stand firm against him when you are obedient to your heavenly father. And guess what? When you resist him and you're standing firm on the word of God, even though sometimes when you're standing firm on the word of God, it looks like this devil ain't going nowhere. It's like your problem ain't going nowhere. It's like things are not moving. But I'm here to tell you that the word say, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and guess what the Bible say? And he will flee from you. So I'd rather believe the word of God than believe my circumstances that uh, anybody else's circumstances. He said, if I'm submitted to God, that he will flee from me. And I believe God. I, I believe that. And so let's go to uh, Ephesians 6 and 13 uh, that confirms that also. Resist, he will flee. He tried to make like you think he's not going in the world. Oh, but you're going, you're going, devil. Because I'm submitted to God. And Ephesians. Ephesians 6. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and 13. Just one verse there. It says. Therefore put on. So do you. So have you put on the word. Because that's the first thing. In order to resist the devil. It says therefore put on every piece of God's armor. So you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. That's anything that coming up against you. The only way you're going to be able to exist him when he attack you, when he's coming up against you, you're going to have to have on the armor. And that armor is the word of God. You can't go outside. You can't go even when it's cold outside. You can't go outside half dressed and, you know, leave your shoes off. You need your shoes on, your shoes on, your socks on, your coat, your head, wrap everything when it's cold outside. That's and you know, that's because you're trying to resist that cold because you don't want to get sick or get flu. So the same thing with us. In the evil, when the enemy comes up against us, we have to put on the air word of God and to put it on. Make sure that you have the word of God and uh, because that's the only way you're going to be able to resist the enemy is the word of God. That's why he say put it on. And you put it on by meditating in it, studying it. <laughs> And hearing it. So constantly meditate in the word of God. Pray in the spirit. And when you put the word on, then now you're on for his attacks. Because it's not a matter of if, but when he comes after you. It say, 
be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. So when the dust settles, when everything is all over with, when he said you won't go win, when he said you won't go get well, when he said you was going down for the count, when he told you you was going to lose your house, when he told you you was going to lose your car, when he told you about anything negative, then when it, when the situation's over, you'll still be standing. In other words, you'll still have your car, you'll still have your house, your house and you'll still be well in your body. When he looked like you weren't going to make it out of there, when you was confused and nervous and upset and didn't know what to do, and when it does settle, when everything was over, with, you were still standing. That's why, because you're standing on the word of God. Amen. That's why we can't look at what's saying. And they say to stand, withstand, to resist the enemy. See, everything when I read in James 4 and 7, they say resist. Ephesians 4 and 7, they say resist. And some Christians, they don't want to resist. They don't want to resist the enemy. K, Shira, Shira, whatever will be, will be. No, it's going to be like I said. It's going to be like what I say, not whatever will be. And we're going to find that out with, with Jesus, what he did as we go further in the lesson. Okay, the second enemy, we're talking about the faith, our enemies, faith is faith's adversaries. Faith has some adversaries. Faith has some enemies. Now, the, we, the, uh, the second enemy we want to talk about today is the enemy to our faith is being preoccupied with sense, knowledge, evidence. Being preoccupied with sense. S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, sense, knowledge, evidence. In other, words, in other words, evidence that comes to you by way of your senses. Knowledge that comes to you through your senses. If you get preoccupied with this knowledge, you will lose the faith fight. You can't afford to be preoccupied in what's in the senses. In other words, basing everything on what you sense, on what your senses tell you. Okay? What you see, how things appear, how things look, what you feel, and what you hear when it comes to taking God and his word. Okay, the things that you pick up on your sensory mechanism, see, feel, what you see, feel, taste, touch, hear, is an enemy to your faith. So let me say that again. The things that you pick up on your sensory mechanism, like what you see, what you feel, what you hear, what you touch, what you taste, is an enemy to faith. They have their place. Sure they have, and you need to use them. But never do I use my senses and my sense knowledge evidence to tell me where I am, who I am, and what I can do when it comes to God. So let me say it again. When it comes to sense, knowledge, evidence, I cannot allow it to dictate to me and tell me where I am, who I am, and what I can do when it comes to the things of God. Now, there is a time and place to use your senses, particularly when you're, particularly when you're cooking. You're in your cooking, and they say that stove says it's hot. Well, that's hot, but don't touch it. That's a good time to use your senses. Or uh, you get ready to cross the street, and you see this 18 ruler coming. You better look both ways and don't cross the street. That is a good way, good time to use your senses. But when it comes to the things of God, you cannot use your senses. Well, okay, because you have choices to make. But when it comes to God's word, when your senses, when your senses and what the word of God says, this is very important. When you're when it comes to God's word, when your senses and what the word of God says collide, when what God says and what your senses say collide, you have a choice to make. Always, when you have a choice to make, always side or go on the side of the word of God. Even when it's consistent with what your senses are telling you, you always need to side in with the word of God, okay? And that's the faith fight. Because the sense is telling me, yo, my body is sick. Okay, that's real. But the word of God told me, with the stripes, I am healed. So what I'm going to have to do, what I'm 
giving my, my this ain't my stomach bothering me. Well, I'm giving my stomach pepto bismol or I got a headache or giving my stomach towel or whatever. I'm still confessing the word of God and telling him with Jesus Christ, I am healed. And so I'm just going to not... I'm not going to go down to the level of my senses. I'm going to take care of what they do in the natural. But I know to, be, to get to the root of the problem, then I'm going to have to confess with Jesus Christ, I am here. Because the pepto bismol, the Tylenol, what is a band-aid approach, I want to get to the real, the root of the problem, what's causing this. And that's, um, keep saying that, and that's fighting the good fight of faith, saying what Jesus said. Now, when you're doing everything else, when you are used to, see, when you're used to basing everything on your five, uh, I don't know about you, before I came to Christ, I was used to basing everything on my five senses. You know, everything, that's how I learned everything, on my senses. My senses told me whether the weather was good or bad. Or, uh, it, it, it told me, it tell me everything. Uh, so it's Christians who have never, but then it's Christians, some Christians, who have never left the cis realm since they've been a Christian. When it comes to the things of God, they're still trying to use their senses when it comes to the things of God. And that's where you're losing the fight. You're losing the fight because you can't use your senses when it comes to the things of God. Now, everything we learned in life, like I said before, we learned it through our senses before we came to God. But when you come to God, he, he is a spirit. And it's a whole new walk. It's, I don't know what it is. So that's why he say the just shall live by faith. Uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by senses. It's a whole new realm of things that we have to learn on. And your flesh don't like going that way because it's used to feeling its way through, seeing its way through, hearing its way through. See, that's what the flesh is used to, but the flesh is not in control. Now, your spirit is in control, but your spirit is used to hearing everything. It just used to, I, just, your, I mean, your senses is used to dictating everything. So let's go to uh, John 20, 25 through 29. John 20, 25 through 29. John 20, 25 through 10. Look at, look at this in John, John, John 20, 25 through 29. See, the senses, your flesh is just used to feeling this way. But look what John, when, I remember when I said when you come to the, when you come to the things of God, you have to leave your senses. Okay, John, if you have your Bible, go to John 20, the 20th chapter, starting with the 25th verse. John 20 chapter, starting with the 25th verse. They told him, ye, they told him, the disciples that was there when Jesus came, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas, but he replied, I won't believe. See, that's an act of your will. He said, I won't believe it. Unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Unless I see the wounds in his hand. Put my fingers into them. And place my hand into the wound in his side. He said, he said, I'm not, unless I can have something I can feel. See, he used to feeling his way. Seeing his way. Hearing his way. So now he you want to use that same apparatus when it comes to the things of God, unless I can see him and put my hands into his I will not believe. Okay? Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, he particularly pointed to Thomas, because Thomas said, I'm not going to believe until I can see it, feel it. And so he said to Thomas, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. 
Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. And then Thomas said, my Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. In other words, when well, you can just take God at his word without any evidence. God says I'm well. God says I'm here. God says be in peace. God say be joyous. I'm going to take God at his word even though everything is topsy-turvy. I'm going to still take God at his word even though everything that I'm believing God for is against me from the outside. But I'm going to take God at his word. He said when I take him at his word, he said that's when I'm blessed. Because you ain't going to need to be, uh, believe God when everything is right because you know then. But when you can believe God when everything is going against what he said, then he said, that's when you are blessed. Now let's see if Jesus is going to practice his own rule. Let's just, Jesus just telling us to do it and he's not going to do it. You know, you got people that tell you to do everything. And then when it comes to them, then they don't practice the word. They tell you to stand on the word and believe God. But when it comes to their needs being met, they got every scheme cooked up and doing everything uh, illegal or whatever to get their needs met. So let's see if Jesus want, is doing the same thing that he's telling us to do. Let's go to Mark 4, 35 through 41. Mark 4, 35 through 41. And see if he's doing the same thing he's telling us to do. Mark 4, 35 through 41. You know how people say, don't do as I do, but do as I say? Let's see if we if we serving a God like that. And, and the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, meaning his disciples, he said, let us pass over unto the other side. Now he's making a faith statement. Like when you say, I'm, when, uh, that, uh, uh, I'm healed in my body. The devil not just going to let you say, I'm healed in my body. I'm you, with Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Get ready for the faith fight when you start talking about you healed and you up and you on top and you are uh, you the head and not the tail and you above only and not beneath and you blessed going out and blessed coming in. Get ready for the faith fight. Jesus said that I'm going over to the other side. Okay? You just ain't gonna just say that statement and get away with it. They ain't gonna have no fight. Okay? So, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. The 37th verse says, and there, uh-oh, look, wait a minute, what you gonna do now, Jesus? And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship. So that it was now full. It was full of what? Water. You tell me that you're going to the other side. We're going to see, Jesus. The ship is now full of water. We're going to see if you're going to sink or you're going to go to the other side. And he was in the hinder port. Now, wait a minute. He made a statement saying, I'm going to the other side. So he in the hinder port of the ship, asleep on the pillar. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose out of his sleep, out of his peaceful sleep, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So when Jesus said, I'm going to the other side, and something tried to come in and corral him and stop him from going up to the other side, which was the wind, he spoke to his situation. And so when you say that you're well and the enemy try to attack your body, you need to speak to that situation and to declare and still say, I'm here and peace be still or whatever body line up to the word of God. You will have to speak to the word of God and not speak and not roll the oil or must not be going over to the other side. Oh, I must not be well. Oh, I must be confused. Oh, I must be broke. Oh, I must be this. No, no, no. Rise up like Jesus and speak to the situation. He said, peace, be still. Because we have been given the authority here on earth. The Bible said the earth has he given to the children of men. He said, behold, I give unto you the authority and the power, the power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the ability of the enemy 
and nothing by any means shall hurt you. And then he told us to take dominion. So we have dominion. And Satan only can do to us what we allow him to do. So we need to do like I, uh, like Jesus did since he's our example. Rise up and speak the storm because that storm was trying to prevent him from going to the other side. So when you make a confession and say that you're going to do certain things, it's all designed to keep you from doing what you say you're going to do. And so don't roll over and just take it and say, I must not be going over. I must not going to be getting this car. I must not be getting this house. I must not going to be getting this wife or whatever it is. No. Oh, yes, I am. I spoke it in faith. I believe it because I'm going to speak to this situation. And he said, and then he said unto the disciples, he said, peace be still. And the wind did what? Cease. And there was a great calm. You say, well, I speak to things that don't happen right away, but I tell you what, the minute you operate in faith, the storm do cease. But he, the devil is a master at the circumstances. Jesus' faith was built up. Your faith had to get built up. And so the devil tried to keep people's faith from being built up before they even get started by saying, look, you spoke to, you spoke to your body and you, you see that big knot on your knee and that knot's still there. That knot didn't go nowhere. That knot is still on your knee. Yes, it is. My faith is working while the knot is still there. You keep speaking and saying what God say, and you wake up one day and that knot will be gone because faith goes to work that the minute that you speak is to believe in God's word. And so that's how faith operates. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it? He said, how is it that you have no faith? In other words, how is it that you have no word in manifestation? How is it that you're not speaking the word over your circumstances? Uh, you've been walking with me every day. I've been teaching you the word all 24, 7, night and day. You've been walking with me. You see the miracles I did. The people needed fish. I gave the people fish. The people blinded eyes open. All of these things happened. And how is it that you don't have no faith? He said, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. He's a faith man. That's what kind of man he is. He's a man that lives by faith. And they're going to be asking you, what kind of woman are you are? That you ain't fearful? You ain't scared? You, you're, not, you're not crying? You're not, what's wrong with you? You're not in fear? You, you're not concerned? Yeah, I'm concerned. I'm a faith woman. I'm a faith man of God. I believe in speaking the word of God and standing on it no matter what I see. I'm just like my heavenly father. I'm a spirit speaking being. So that we begin to speak the word of God. Now let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 says, While we look, uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go again. While we look, not at the things which are seen. What you see is real. What you feel is real. What you hear is real. But we see, while we look not at the things which are seen, look, but at the things which are not seen. And what's this thing that I'm not seen? The word of God. God is a spirit. You can't see him. And the word is the Bible says that Jesus said the words I speak unto you, they're spirit and they are life. The word is spirit and you can't see that. He said, for the things which are seen are in uh, temporal. The things that you see are temporal. It's temporary, meaning it's subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, there are two cases, two classes, I would say, of things. There are two classes of things. Things that are seen and things that are not seen. The word look implies looking to for the, the, purpose, for the purpose of making a decision. So the word look means Looking to for the purpose of making a decision. So he said, don't look to the situation. Don't look to your senses for the purpose. When they say look not while we look not at the things which are seen, 
It means don't look at it for the purpose of making a decision. I don't want to base my uh, decision on what I see and what I feel and what I hear. I got to base it on the word of God, something that's unchanging. See, the senses, they're going to change. It's like one day, uh, all hell break loose. And the next day, it's, uh, it's heaven on earth. Or the next minute, or five minutes, or an hour later, you know, it's like the storm. You know how it be a storm and be raining cats and dogs. And then, you, then 10 minutes later, it just the uh, sun out and it's just beautiful. It changes. That's why when all hell break loose, don't go with the storm. Keep speaking the word of God. Go with the word of God because that's going to change. It's only temporary. It's going to change. And I'm here to tell you, your situation is temporary. It's going to change. And don't get off the word of God. Stay on God's word because God will vindicate his word. Temporal means, like I said, temporal. A temporary means that it's subject today. It's subject to change. And so, only thing that's not going to change is the Word of God. That's what I want to stick with. I don't you want to stick with something that's not going to change, that's going to stay the same. Let's go to Hebrews uh, 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Hebrews 13 and 8, it says, Jesus Christ is a, it's symbolic for the Word. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. See, Jesus is going to be the same. He's not going to ever change. Situations, changes, people change. But what? That's why you want to give it the word of God. So when people change, you don't have to change. And you can stand with the word and you can stay consistent. Because sometimes if people change, you kind of want to change with them. No, no, no. Just because you change the act of food don't mean I'm going to change the act of food. I'm going to stick with the word of God. Because that word... The word of God don't change. He said, I'm the same. He said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and, for, and forever. And Jesus Christ is synonymous with the word. The word of God is the same yesterday and today and forever. That's why you can trust it. That's why you can put your hope in it. That's why you can put your faith in it. Because that's something that will not change and will come to pass. Okay? Now. This all is saying that when it says, you go back to our scripture, go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. Let's go back up there. I want to say something. I want to say something else about that. It says, while we look not at the things are seen, for the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. You know, they're subject to change. Now, this seems like a contradiction. Because how can you look at something that is not seen? How can you look at something that's not seen through the eyes of faith, which is the word of God? That's how you're going to see it through the eye, through your faith. Your, your faith is going to cause you to look at that which is not seen. Because faith is your evidence that you have whatever you believe in God for. Okay? So without faith, we could, because without faith, we can change things. So use your faith to change things. See, this is what, this is what the faith fight is. It's all about when you are standing on God's word and your circumstances are contrary. It is opposite of everything that you believe in God for everything that you're standing on. Your sense is telling you that this is not the way it is. With your faith, you can say, yes, it is because God said it. I believe it. I receive what the word says. I believe that I'm healed. I believe that I'm prosperous. I believe that I am an overcomer. I believe what God spoke to me in his word. Therefore, I am going to say what God's word says. That's going to get real, real good. Amen. Now, when you are doing this, when you're doing and making that statement, you are changing what you see outside of you to reflect what you believe and confess that's on the inside of your heart. So I'm going to say that again. When you are doing this, you are changing. When you're speaking word, the word of God contrary to what's going on in your life, you're standing on the word of God, you're speaking God's word. What you're actually doing, you are changing what you see. This is how you change what you see on the outside of you to reflect what you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. This is how to change. When you if you go to you change your outside with what's on the inside. 
Because the word of God is more powerful than what you see on the outside and what you feel on the outside. That's why you have to continue to confess the word of God to everything that you're saying, line up to the word of God. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. So we do not deny. So that's another thing I'm going to say. We do not deny the things that we see. We're not saying deny it. They're real. We just don't lie to dictate to us and tell us who we are and what we can do and what we can have. Okay? We sit and then we just simply do not look at them. I'm not saying that not wasn't on my knee. That not is on my knee. But I'm not looking at it to this to determine whether or not I'm healed or not, or whether they're not gonna move or not, because I got God's word to say with the stripes I'm healed. So I got a choice to make. Let the knot on the outside of me dictate, or I'm gonna let what's the word of God inside of me dictate it to reflect the outside and remove the knot. So I'm gonna allow the word of God that's on the inside of me, speaking that out of me, to remove the knot that's on the outside. I want everything on the outside. If you everything is everything on the outside of you that's wrong, whatever you need, change it. Then you need to find scripture. For, for, for whatever you believe in God for and confess that until everything that you got changes. Everything changes on the outside that you won't change. Get a scripture. I don't care for five things. Get five scriptures. And you keep confessing that scripture and believing it and thanking God and praising God until everything lined up to the word of God. And that's how it works. And the devil, don't let him intimidate you and back you in the corner talking about look how long it's been. I, I, I'd rather be confessing the word of God. I have nothing to lose. I'm going to continue. The best, the word of God. And then that's when you're going to know. See, the devil won't intimidate you and try to tell you, get you in accounting and see how long it's been. Look how long it's been. Because he don't want you to find out that God is real, that the word of God is real. He don't want you to know. But once you, when you start knowing what God will do, know that he'll heal her, know that he'll get you out of certain situations, know that he'll be your peace, know that he'll be your joy, know that he'll be your companion, know that he'll provide for you. I tell you, it become real good, and that's what the devil don't want you to know. He said, we want to keep you on the outside, looking at the outside. That's what he does on the outside. He wants to rule and lord our, our lives, and we say, not so. So let's go to... Uh, one more scripture, so before we close for the day, and see, that's how faith, that's how faith does. This, that's your faith acting on the word of God instead of your senses, and that's what rules the word of God. So let me go to one word, one more scripture, I would say, because I said, oh, we, I'm over. Um, that's one more scripture, uh, should I say before um, we close, and that's Matthews, let's go to Matthews uh, 6 and 30. And then we'll close for the day. Matthew 6, the last scripture, Matthew 6, 30 through 31. Sorry about that. 6, 30. It says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now, God, God care more about us than he do some grass. But if he can clothe some grass, he can clothe you. Amen. And so, it's the therefore, take the 31 verse, say Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, take no thought saying. Don't, if you, you can tell when people take the thought that the devil, the devil give them because they're going to say it, it's going to come out of their mouth. They say, don't take the thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall be clothed? Don't take that thought. Don't say that thought. See, you can tell your warrior and your worry when these things when they begin to come out of your heart, they got into your spirit, and now you're speaking them out of your mouth because there's too many believers are saying what they have and what they don't have instead of saying what the word of God said. In other words, they're talking the problem. So we don't want to talk the problem. We want to make sure that we're talking God's word and then God get all the glory. God bless you. Uh, on today and I just gonna I'm gonna close for today and I will see you next week. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Bye bye.